y'all, it's Gypsy. Uh, thanks for watching Wisteria Witches. Tonight I'm going to be talking about Pictish writing, or magical writing in general, I guess. But my focus in this particular little episode that I'm doing has to do with Pictish font. Um, when I first started getting uh, to the point where I wanted to create a book of shadows, uh, I wanted to just kind of do, I'm an art person, and so I wanted to write in a way that it would be very personal, um, you know, somewhat mysterious. Um, also, just kind of wanted to write things in a way that other people couldn't read my shit. So, I was browsing through, and again, this shows my newness, okay? I was browsing through the blue book. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. And in doing so, I came across, and I have by no means read even most of this book, I'll be honest. Um, I started reading it, and it was just too in a box for me. And so I just, I kind of just use it as a reference once in a while. It's kind of like my Silver Raven Wolf book, The Solitary Witch, or whatever. I just, um, I can't just sit and read that stuff. It's just, there's, there's, all right, I'll say it. There's too much bullshit, and I didn't feel like wading through it all the time. But I do use them as a reference for things here and there. I pull little pieces of things out as I need them. In this particular instance, I was looking at the different ways that, you know, different writing styles that were in here. And back here in Lesson 12, he has all of these um, various ways of writing. And he refers to them as magical writing. And he talks about, I guess, the different traditions that use the different writing styles. He shows different runes and... Um, things like that, and I got all in love with the Pictish swirl writing. That is this right here, and in the book, if you have this book, it's back here on page 254, 254. Um, and if you do have the book, I would encourage you to kind of look at that section and just give me your thoughts. In the comments if you can um, some people are having hell with these new comments and Google Plus jacking up our YouTube um, give me your thoughts about how this information is presented because for a while I thought that this alphabet was actually based on the Pictish alphabet because I have seen a lot of different um, examples of Pictish artwork their carvings. Um, there were um, several stones found in, um, like, the Scotland region, in the, the, I guess, northeastern region of Scotland, where the Picts were understood to have, um, you know, lived back way back in like the sixth to eighth centuries. Um, that's not the case. Um, you know, in fact, I, I read something today, and I wish I could tell you where it was, because I don't remember, but uh, I was just kind of browsing the internet, and I'll tell you, uh, the article that I'm going to reference mostly came from Wikipedia. There is an extensive bibliography. Uh, whoever wrote this article did a shiz ton of homework, so I feel pretty safe using it for the purposes of this video. Uh, but basically, you know, it just kind of looks like uh, Mr. Buckland dare I say, might have made it up himself. Yeah, I said it. Um, anyway, let me show you an example. This is what I do in my, this is my daily draw journal, and I showed this in my Journaling 101 video, and as I went back and was watching it, I realized you can't see nothing on that video. Like, you can't see anything that I wrote, so it was kind of pointless. So now that I have, you know, basically no freaking light now, um, you can see it a little bit better. This is my daily draw. So here's what I, you know, write. And it's pretty cool looking. I started to write the date in Roman numerals. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. That one has regular writing. <laughs> um, here's another page of Pictish. So, yeah, I mean, I, I am that nerd. I actually do write like that in my, in my uh, daily draw journal. Not every day. Some days I just want to get the words down. I just don't feel like going into it. I have learned, though, that you, the smaller you write, the better off you are because, you know, those little, those little characters fill up a page pretty quick. 
But anyway, that's that's how I write in my journal. I've also, um, in my tarot journal, in the very first page of my tarot journal, I have it written in Pictish, which almost, actually in this case, looks almost like regular writing. It's very similar. So that's kind of like my magical way of writing. But I'm a geek, and so, you know, I just started looking stuff up because I wanted to do a video on this. And like I said, I had my doubts because... You know, I'm looking at it, and the Pictish, you know, alphabet key that was given, you know, that I that I found, wasn't given to me, I found it myself, um, I keep it in my daily draw journal, because I am still learning the font, so I have to refer to them. But if you look, they, they refer, there's one for every character. And down here, there's these characters that represent common combinations of words in the English language okay um, the picks were located in north eastern Scotland okay they didn't speak normal like this English okay um, if they had an alphabet that was established it didn't match our alphabet, okay? And I seriously doubt that GH would have been a common combination. That doesn't make sense. In fact, Buckland himself in his book makes the point that there's another Pictish font that's used, and it's um, straight lines. It's not the swirly kind. But in order to write in that type of Pictish, you spell it phonetically, which seems to me that would be like really hard to do because that would be based on what the person perceived the phonetic spelling to be. So I struggle with that anyway, but whatever. Y'all kind of know my feelings on that whole thing. So the Pictish, I, I went and started looking up, you know, information on Picts. First of all, um, you know, like I said, they lived a long time ago, uh, an early, let's see, late Iron Age and early medieval Celtic times. Okay, so this is like way, we, we back in the day. Okay, these guys um, are old, 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 super duper old. Um, they're thought to have merged with the Gales, uh, spelled G-A-E-L-S, uh, which is was a Celtic civilization, a Celtic group that kind of absorbed the Picts um, after a certain point. From what I've read, they weren't real organized. They did have kings, but the kings kind of appointed their sons or uncles or, you know, whatever family members, you know, hooked them up with jobs ruling other little kingdoms, but they weren't, um, you know, I mean, it's not like they had even like Morse code back then, you know, I mean, they were spread out. They were in, um, you know, all different areas, and uh, so there was not a, a unified leader. Um, there were lots of, like, each tribe group had their own kind of king, and they kind of did it their own way. So it was like the United States of Pickland. Um, sorry, that was stupid, but you know what I'm trying to say. But there wasn't one unifying um, authority over all of them and so consequently I think that's maybe why they were easily conquered because there wasn't um, an organized military there wasn't one guy saying hey what the deuce it was kind of uh, hey what are you doing here oh yeah okay took it over oh next town whoa what are you doing here um, that kind of thing so let's see what else did I find out there was a lot of interesting stuff in this thing um, oh there is a there's a common belief it seems in um, in visual depictions of the Picts that they were covered in tattoos. Uh, the Latin let's see, it says the Latin word picti first occurs in a panegyric. It's uh, some sort of a body of um, literature written by uh, Eumenius in AD two ninety seven and is taken to mean painted or tattooed people. Um, but another person named Sally Foster noted that much ink has been spilt over what the ancient writers meant by Picts, but it seems to be a generic term for people living north of the Fourth Clyde Isthmus who raided the Roman Empire. 
So, um, you know, I guess there's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, no, they were tattooed. They were tattooed people. They were like freaks. They had the sleeve. I mean, they were doing sleeves and sleeves weren't even cool yet. You know, that kind of thing. And then there's other people that were like, no, they just called them that. They're from up north. That's all it means. It's like ancient Gaelic word for Yankee. You know, that's what they were talking about. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so I don't, you know, were they painted? We don't know. There aren't any left, and we don't have any descendants to ask. And they don't exactly have a lot of photographs left from that time period. So, um, that's just going to be one of those things we may never really know. Um, however, they did, you know, unlike their font, some of their artwork and symbols does still exist. And it is actually fascinating. Uh, I'm going to skip. I don't want to talk too long about this and bore you folks. Um, I would encourage you, if you're interested, though, look up pics in Wikipedia and read the article because there's tons of cool information. And I actually wouldn't mind reading some of these books that they uh, refer to because it just, um, for some reason, I'm just really interested in it. I don't know. I am, I, I do have Scottish roots, I have Irish roots, and so all of the, you know, I, I tend to lean towards the Celtic, um, pardon me, the Celtic paganism, um, as far as my personal practice and just the pieces of, um, pagan history that I, that I study, I do tend to focus more on, uh, the Celtic, um, aspect, the Celtic traditions, just because I feel closest to them, because that's where I came from. Um, okay, so they did have a lot of carvings. They did leave behind. Uh, there were some things that survived. I'm going to show you this um, crappy little black and white picture. Again, there's a lot of more. Pi there's a lot of more. There's a lot of more pictures. There's a lot more pictures in the Wikipedia article. I deleted a lot of them because I was trying to save paper, and I wasn't really planning on showing a lot. But here is um, a stone. I believe this is called... The Everlemno Serpent Stone. This is a class one Pictish stone. I am not familiar. I'm not sure where it is. I think I deleted that part. But you get an idea of, you know, you see how they're elaborate. There's a snake up here at the top. And then this is this classic Z bar fashion, uh, a Z bar symbol that they use in a lot of their stuff. And then down here is a mirror and comb. And I'll show you some more examples of that in a minute. I'm not sure what the mirror and comb thing represents. There's not a lot of, you know, there's really not much written history at all from this time period. So what these symbols actually stood for is not really sure. Some people think that the big Z-bar, these elaborate Z-bar things, um, might have denoted a king's name or someone of significance. Uh, like everybody had their own Z-bar symbol. Sounds cool. I don't know for sure. And really no one does. Here's a piece of jewelry. They were quite the little metal workers. Um, a lot of their stuff was silver, um, and they believe that they got that stuff from conquering other tribes farther south from them, um, because I guess there's silver mines or down further south in Scotland. Um, those of you that are watching that are from Scotland and know anything about your terrestrial history, pipe in. Chime in. Uh, but anyway, you see this Z symbol, you know, again, right here, and it's a different one. You know, this one looks distinctly different from the one that's actually in this one. You know, there's this has circles inside of circles. This one has these elaborate little tiny, um, looks like stars. Oh, no, they're swirls. They are, it looks like the trichaly thing inside. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know, it's really hard to see on this video, but... That's incredible. And then there's like this dog figure down here, um, which I, I like a lot. I would really like to have this, but um, I'm pretty sure it's in a museum somewhere. And if I had it, I would be breaking some law in many countries. Um, but anyway, that's um, that's pretty cool. That's, um, that's a little bit of their history. Um, like I said, I don't want to go into it too much. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I will conclude by saying that, let's see here, it talked about, hmm, it says early Pictish religion is presumed to have resembled Celtic polytheism in general, 
although only place names remain from the pre-Christian era. So it's really, they really don't know about their, a lot about their religion either. Because as I said, there is no, um, you know, there's really little to no written history. Uh, it says the Pictus language has not survived because they were kind of taken over by the Gales. Their own personal language, their dialect, nobody knows, nobody's gonna. That is gone. Uh, the absence of surviving written material in Pictish, Mr. Buckland. If we discount the ambiguous Pictish inscriptions in the Ogham, in the Ogham script, does not indicate a preliterate preliterate society. Um, Pictish iconography shows books being read and carried, um, so there's reason to think that they did have some sort of a written language, but obviously none of the written texts actually survived time. So while there is evidence through pictures, pictorial representations from that time of there being books, there are no actual books. So how they wrote is really a mystery. No one really knows. That does not exist anymore. Now, if you want to look at their artwork and create a font that looks like something they might have written in, that's great. Um, my frustration comes with the fact that it was kind of depicted as something that the Pictiwita, which is um, apparently a tradition of Wicca, um, use in their magical writing and he just he made it you know the way that I took it anyway it just sounded like you know this is you know based on an ancient text well no it's not it's based on ancient artwork that's different these characters do not exist as far as Pictish writing in any form no one knows what their writing looked like so he can call it Pictish swirl he can call it a Pictish writing style, but it's um, something that has popped up recently because the English language as we know it is not that old. And so having these particular, you know, these special symbols um, such as, you know, letter combinations. Where did my little cheat sheet go? Where are you, cheat sheet? These little letter combinations at the bottom, C-H-S-H-T-H-G-H-N-G. Yeah, those are um, things that have developed in the English language and only probably in the last, you know, handful of centuries. <laughs> this would never, ever exist, okay? That just, that doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, there's that. So, that's, um, that is my little video. I just, you know, like I said, I just, I have fun with the font and, and I started doing that before I really did all the research. Did it ruin it for me? Hell no. I'm still going to write like that in my daily draw journal because it looks awesome and no one knows what I'm writing. So it's cool. I don't mind that it's not an authentic font that existed in the seventh century. Um, am I put off that, you know, Raymond Buckland kind of represents it as being based on an ancient, you know, text? Yeah, that kind of puts me off. It's frustrating. You know, um, I don't like believing something and then finding out later that it's complete bullshit. That makes me feel stupid. So that was a little bit aggravating. But, you know, whatever. I did my homework. I know what's up. Nobody's getting one over on the gypsy, okay? Because I do know how to read. I can even read this nonsense right now. And, um... You know, even without my little sheet, I can figure it out. They're actually, the way that the letters are done, they're, they're kind of similar. And it was funny because when I first started looking at it, I was like, wow, our letters are kind of based on this. Now that I'm going back and looking at it, you know, I'm like, no, it isn't. This is based on the way we already write. It just makes it easier to remember some of the symbols because they look like our stuff already. But I digress. Anyway, that is my video. Um, I'm sorry that it took me so long to get back to you guys. I've been trying to wait until I looked nice and had my makeup on and was all fixed up. And, um, you know, I didn't want you looking at my ratchet mess here, but that's just the way it goes in my world. I don't have time to look pretty <laughs> for the camera. But I did make time to do this video, uh, on Pictish text and, uh, the Picts. So, like I said, if you want to know more, I highly recommend going and starting at Wikipedia. Check out that, uh, article. Um, like I said, I just uh, looked up pics 
P-I-C-T-S. Where is it? There it is. Uh, just go to Wikipedia and search that. And then I'm telling you, I mean, there is just tons of references. Oh, real fast. Here's some other um, of those Z-Bar, I guess, um, designs that have been discovered. They also do these really awesome looking arches on some of their stuff, on some of their stone carvings. And then they have tons of different mirror symbols and comb symbols that they use on their stuff. And that just is so interesting to me. What's the scoop with the mirror and the combs? Are they really mirrors and combs? I don't know what else they could be, but I mean, mirrors and combs? That had enough significance to make it on the rock with the dog? <laughs> um, and then here's a few more, and I didn't actually see examples of these, but I did see a couple of these on some of the artwork. But anyway, um, let me see. I was going to show you his list of... You check this out, y'all. This is like part of the bibliography. This is the second page of the bibliography. I mean, the person that wrote this was not playing. This is this is a serious article. So, like I said, I felt comfortable using it in this um, in this video. I trust this. I'll tell you right now. I would trust this text right here a whole lot more than I trust this one. Okay. I am sorry, Raymond Buckland fans. I mean no disrespect to this man. I know what an impact he had on, uh, you know, the Wiccan religion, and um, I appreciate that he brought this to the surface and stripped away some of the taboo and, you know, helped bring witchcraft into um, being again, and that's awesome. I just, um, you know, there's a couple things about this, you know, that, that one is the main thing right now. I haven't read enough of it to feel scorned about anything else, but... When it comes to uh, the way that he represented the information on the Pictish writing, I just was a little bit like, I think you were kind of building that up a little bit there, Raymond. It's not that you made it up. Just admit it. You made it up. That's okay. It's all right. I did that in summer camp, too. I love making up new ways to write. It's fun. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but if you want real information, go to Wikipedia and look up pics. So that's all I have for tonight, y'all. I am literally fading out as I'm talking to you. So I'm going to say goodnight, sweet dreams, and blessed be.